Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Parent and Caregiver Corner, where I'll be touching upon hot topics and or answering your burning questions. Welcome to September. It's hard to believe that our summer is already coming to an end. In a few short days, our kids will be back to the grind of early education. But here's what's different. For kids starting school for the very first year, it's possible that they're going to feel nervous or stressed about this upcoming change. That makes sense. For kids who have been in school, it's possible that they feel nervous or stressed because of the pandemic and they know very well how quickly and drastically their routines can change. And then you might even have young kids who are going to be losing the company of their siblings as they head off to school. These are all valid reasons to feel uneasy in the next few weeks. So today we are going to talk about some great tips to help your children through this transition, whatever that transition may be. So for the following five suggestions for supporting and reassuring your child through back-to-school worry, I am using cmho.org, which is Children's Mental Health Ontario, and the Sick Kids Centre for Community Mental Health, both of which are attached in the description. So number one, accept and validate your child's emotions. Let your children know that they aren't wrong for feeling worried and uncertain right now. We don't want to avoid their feelings by simply saying, you know, well, this is just what you have to do, so we're going to have to suck it up, right? We don't really want to do that. Um, whether they feel ready or not, we want them to recognize their worries, right? We want to help them realize that sometimes anxiety can make them feel really hot inside and maybe even cause your tummy to feel sore. And when we give our kids these cues, it's going to help immensely uh, when the first day of class approaches and they're feeling anxious and complaining of a bellyache, right? Uh, number two, look for opportunities to address your child's specific worries and concerns in an age-appropriate way. So this might mean helping them to find answers to their biggest questions or role-playing particular scenarios that are causing them undue stress. So you can also try playing games like the what if game to help them pre-assess anxiety inducing situations. For example, hmm, what if you get to school and realize that you forgot your mask? What could you do? Number three, remind your child that they can turn to other people for support, both at home and at school. And remind them that they aren't alone. But it's important when offering that support to your child um, that you also reflect on your own feelings. So be sure to always ask yourself, you know, what is triggered in me by my child's emotional reaction? And then I'll have to do my best to approach that situation in a calm state, right? So that's what we're wanting to achieve. Number four, I am going to quote straight from CMHO. So they say, recognize the opportunity you are being given in this moment. The literature on resilience is clear. Children are capable of weathering even the stormiest of storms if they can rely on the love and support of at least one caring adult. You have the opportunity to be that person, an emotional anchor in an otherwise stormy sea. I love the way that they word that. And then finally, number five, as the supportive caring adult, offer coping strategies. So I'm going to offer a few examples of coping and relaxation strategies to share with your child as provided by the attached Sick Kids resource and a resource by Save the Children. So this first idea is offered by Sick Kids, and I'm going to quote their advice here. So help your child draw a worry safe. Encourage your child to be as creative as possible and imagine that all their big worries are held tightly in the worry safe and can't help them or can't hurt them. Uh, then have some scheduled worry time. So have a designated period to talk about worries. You can maybe try after dinner or at the end of the week depending on your child's needs. And when it's not worry time, write the worries down for later and keep them in the safe. Unquote. So for older kids, you might draw a box on paper and let them fill it in with their worries. 
For younger kids, you might actually create a worry mason jar that your child can sort of talk into and then close the lid when they don't want to worry about it anymore. This sort of activity opens a space for safe and accepting discussion. And then we have SaveTheChildren.org, which offers some techniques you can teach your kids to use as calming strategies in the moments that they feel really worried. So I'm going to share two with you now, and I invite you to do them with me as you listen. So this first one is called Flower and Candle, and it is a very simple relaxation technique to encourage deep breathing. So I'm going to have you pretend you have a nice smelling flower in one hand and a slow burning candle in the other. I want you to breathe in slowly through your nose as you smell the flower and breathe out slowly through your mouth as you blow out the candle. Smell the flower, blow out the candle. One more time. Good. So it gives them a nice little visual. Um, and then you also have one that's called the lemon, and it releases muscle tension. So, okay, it's time to make ourselves some calming lemonade. So who, who here can reach for a lemon? You? Yeah? Okay, so grab one lemon and hold it in your hand. Now what about our other hand here? Can you go reach for a lemon with that one too? Yes? Okay, good. So now we have one, two lemons. What do we have to do to make lemonade? Good. We have to squeeze the lemon. So we're going to squeeze both lemons. Squeeze them tight into our body. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Awesome. Now throw your lemons to the floor and relax your hands. Great. But hey, our glass is only half full. Can we do that once more? Reach for your first lemon. Now your second. Good. Now squeeze the juice out. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Awesome. Now throw away your lemons to the floor and relax your hands. Do we have enough lemonade now? Yes? Okay. Let's shake out our hands and relax. Good. So these sorts of things are fun for kids, maybe fun for you, too, for you too if you joined me. Um, and it just helps them connect to their breath and connect to body sensations. If you have any questions regarding the start of the school year or about relaxation, relaxation strategies, do not hesitate to reach out or leave a comment below. We wish you and your family good luck in the upcoming school year. Ciao.